Feliz Tudo bem, bem. Né? Hello, Como você tá? Tô bem. I'm fine and you. Tô aprendendo. <risos> I'm learning English. Very nice. Sounds good. Uh, Sounds good. Oh, good. <laughs> How long you been learning for? Sim, tenho estudado aqui. She said she's been studying English for the last two, three months with private classes, and she's been enjoying it uh, ever since she's come back from Las Vegas. She's been dedicating time to that, and she said, "Let's see, maybe after this fight, she can dedicate even more time to that." Yeah, definitely. It's it's funny. We were just talking about how it seems like. A lot of Brazilian fighters are really starting to, you know, learn English a lot better these days. And I mean, that's just cool to see, you know, how everybody's kind of, uh, you know, I guess getting themselves more available to speaking to everybody. So it's very cool to see. <laughs> Yeah, she said it's something fundamental for fighters to be able to communicate with, with uh, by themselves even more, um, to show their own personality without the mediation of a translator, right? So it's it's a great thing to communicate. So it opens great opportunities. Yeah, I mean, especially when you, you, there's so many English speakers around you in this sport, right? So you probably feel like, man, I kind of have to do this. Do you get that sometimes? <laughs> she said that she doesn't see it necessarily as a pressure, but she really likes studying English and she thinks it's something necessary. So she enjoys it. And, you know, Verna, how about like, how's life been in the pandemic and everything for you? Just because I know it's such a unique thing that we're all going through, you know, these days. But has it, you know, had to change up? Have you had to change up your life much because of? All the craziness happening in the world. Uh, she said that in the beginning, uh, everything was very crazy. And her last camp she did with very few people, just her teacher and two other people in training. Um, so she was afraid to go to the supermarket, afraid to go out and maybe catch COVID. So, um, so she said that things are slowly getting better now here in Brazil getting back to normal, even though with lots of care, but it seems good. It seems things are getting better. Yeah, and I've seen that you've still been like getting out and exploring nature too, which is really cool to see like some waterfalls and whatnot. I mean, where are some, some of your favorite places to go and explore? Because I've seen you've been to some really cool spots. She said that she loves to travel to places, especially close to where she lives in Bahia. And she says that being part of nature be, uh, and entering nature is something that really connects her with her ancestrality and her spirituality. She says that she even thinks that it's part of her, the process of her training camp. Um, to enter in contact with this more psychological and spiritual process of getting in contact with nature. Yeah, definitely could see the benefits there just all around. It's always good to get, get out and explore, especially the beautiful country of Brazil like you guys have. So jealous of those locations. And Alexander, maybe you can go check out these places that she's talking about. So <laughs> very cool there. <laughs> and of course, you mentioned the training camp there, Verna. Got the big exciting fight coming up with Mackenzie Dern. So first of all, I'm just curious, have you, have you met Mackenzie before or is this uh, you know, going to be first encounter with her? Sim, sim, eu conheço... She knows Mackenzie Dern that they ended up fighting one day on the same card in Invicta FC. And so they were able to talk a little bit that day. Ever since, she's also talked a little bit with Mackenzie on social media. She said that Mackenzie complimented her jiu-jitsu in a couple of fights and that she's always very nice, very sweet. She's a great person. And about this camp, she said this camp was a very special camp that she was able to train with lots of people that really helped her in multiple ways helping her spiritually, helping her technically. Um, she said that every camp is special, but that there was something maybe a little bit more special about this camp. Maybe that's related to being in contact with nature more. And um, she said that there was something really nice about this camp for this fight. Well, that's awesome to hear. Yeah, it sounds like a, a very good and unique experience that you've had so far leading up to this. And I mean, just mentioning the camp overall and some of the uniqueness to it. Did you end up, I know I heard about, you know, maybe you training with uh, the World Muay Thai champ, Tanera Lisboa. Did, did that end up happening? Did she help you at all with, you know, striking and everything in your camp? Ah, sim, com certeza. Tina Black. Yeah, she said that she was really, she had a great training and lots of people 
lots of great people helping her this camp. Uh, for example, Tina Black, who is a Mai Thai and kickboxing champion. She's great and really helped her out in that sense. Her coach, who has worked with people all over the world and in China to train them. And Michelle Oliveira, black belt in jiu-jitsu, who came from jiu-jitsu and is really helping her in that area. All right, well, my apologies for getting the names wrong there. That's a little embarrassing, but you know what happens. So, um, yeah, you know, and with this matchup with Mackenzie, like, you two probably the be- the, the two best Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you know, fighters out of females, just overall. I think that's fair to say. And I mean, do you like a matchup like this where, you know, you're going against somebody who also has that same strength, you know, the jujitsu is kind of the comfort zone for them, right? Rather than somebody who, you know, is a totally different style, which maybe presents more of a challenge. I mean, I don't know. How do you look at it when you go against somebody who has that exact, they, you know what their strength is, is also one of your strengths, your biggest strength. As mesmas armas, né? <laughs> Yeah, she says that it's funny, we have the same weapons, right? Um, she said that she's already fought other strong grapplers before, uh, but that the next opponent really is a reference in this area. Um, she said that in general she prefers to fight strikers, maybe because most of her former opponents were strikers and so she got used to that um, but she said it's a great fight she's really excited for it she said that maybe she can end up showing different things besides her jiu-jitsu in different areas explore other things and she said that it's a fight that she'd pay to watch it as a viewer she'd like to pay it she'd like to pay for it yeah i think we all would and that's uh, why it's exciting that it's happening great stylistic matchup and i mean yeah, just how do you expect it to play out? Because a lot of times, historically, it seems like when you put two people together who are so good in one area, like let's say, you know, you guys, your, your jujitsu is so good that it cancels out and becomes like a crazy striking battle for whatever reason. Like you just forget about what we're good at. Let's, let's go and bang it out. Or, you know, sometimes we'll see the great strikers. They'll go at it and then it turns into a wrestling match for some reason. <laughs> how do you see this one, you know? going do you feel like that could be the case here (laughs) she said that she can't talk about her strategy so she's going to talk about a little bit superficially but she said that she's been training to feel comfortable in all fields of the of the octagon and she said that she's been studying Mackenzie very well all of her qualities and her flaws Uh, she says that She's been training to be training for something special, but she can't just say what it is right now. And of course, I wasn't asking for the secrets or anything, but yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> just pointing it out. <laughs> so, and you, you know, like in this matchup, do you feel kind of like the spotlight is more on her for this one? Because I feel like in most of her fights, she takes that from people, and I mean. Maybe that can be a benefit for you where it's like, all right, less pressure and everything. Everybody's more focused on what she's going to do, all about her. But, I mean, you've achieved more in MMA. I think that's fair to say, in my opinion. You know, we got more wins, just have a title to your name, all these things. But, um, yeah, everybody knows Mackenzie Dern. So, does that – do you kind of like being – I don't want to say overlooked necessarily, but maybe the underdog role a little bit? I mean, or just, just not having the spotlight on you. Does that change anything? Yeah, she says that being overlooked is something that she's expecting already to happen and that she likes it because then she can always she can show something and really impress her skills. After your last fight with Felice and everything, people were kind of finally realizing or getting, you know, to see you more. Like the people have been following you for your career so far. They know how good you are and everything. But that one, they were like, oh, wow, she did this to this veteran. You know, let's. Let's give her top 10 next. She needs to really go climbing up the ranks now, which hard to argue with, in my opinion. And But instead, in this one, you get Mackenzie, who, you know, not as high up as maybe somebody could have got. But just what do you think a win over her does for you? I mean, that would be three in a row, um, you know, to get you back on track and really get you climbing up the ranks. What? Uh, how close do you think this win would get you to a title shot, essentially? 
Sim, acho que sim, na verdade, apesar de uma crise. Even though Mackenzie, Mackenzie isn't necessarily a veteran of the sport, she's a very well known and skillful fighter. Uh, so, getting a win over Mackenzie would definitely be a breaking point in her career. It would help her a lot to get. It would help her a lot on this way to the title shots. She wouldn't get a title shot directly after winning this fight. She knows that, but it would be a breaking point because it's the two best of jiu-jitsu fighting against each other, right? So that, that would help a lot. As long as you keep winning, it'll come, right? And, you know, I mentioned the three-fight winning streak now. Of course, you were undefeated, what, I believe, 14-0 before that, 13-0, whatever it was. A great winning streak, of course. Awesome to watch that one. And, I mean, last time we caught up, I think, was after your first Invicta title defense, I believe it was. Uh, whenever it was. And we were talking about how, you know, you're so humble for an undefeated fighter, especially with that many wins and everything. Uh, sometimes rare to see that. Um, so, I mean, I'm just curious, in hindsight, getting to talk to you now, since then, and, you know, you've had that loss to Carla in a very close fight. You know, I think that you could argue that you did win that one. But, um, you know, just what did you learn from actually, you know, losing your undefeated record and just the takeaways from from that fight right there? Sim, sim, com certeza. Eu she says that her first loss um, gave her a shock uh, in reality. She discovered that she needed to be even more of a pro than she was uh, than she already was. Uh, technically, broadening her team, bringing more science to her training camps. So it was a big reality shock, but it was great that it happened in her first fight in the UFC. So she's been able to work on that since then. Yeah, get it out of the way right in the beginning, right? So uh, smooth sailing after that. And I mean, to look at positives from it, though, I mean, we also talked about, you know, last time we caught up, the pressure that can come with an undefeated record, especially one that keeps getting as long as yours was getting. So did it relieve some pressure in a way, you know, by by finally taking away the stigma of, yep, yeah, I have this undefeated streak that's really long. We're getting into like the 15 range here. <laughs> Sim, sim, com certeza, né? Eu acho, eu acredito que sim, eu vinha de uma sequência de... Definitely did. De she, she wanted to win, obviously. Um, it was a good fight despite losing the fight, but it, it was humbling. It, it definitely humanized the process. Yeah, I can imagine. And yeah, definitely no shame in losing to somebody like Carla either, who is obviously one of the best in the division, former champion, all that stuff. And, uh, you know, working her way back towards one just like you are. So, yeah, no shame there. And Verna, I have to bring this up because I, I absolutely think this is one of my favorite, like, little hidden things that a lot of people don't really know about in the sport, but they should because, you know, you beat Amanda Nunes in jiu-jitsu <laughs> multiple times, I believe, right? Twice, is it? Um, so, I mean, that's just... I think that's such a cool thing, especially in hindsight. Like, that's got to feel good for you, too. I mean, being a strawweight, she's a featherweight, bantamweight champion, you know, the best ever. Um, just, I want to know, like, what do you remember about the matches that you had with Amanda in uh, BJJ? Uh, it was, it's really pretty cool looking back and seeing the fights that she had. In total, there were three fights, two fights in which Virna won and one fight in which Amanda won. She said that they're both from the same region in Brazil, um, from the same state, and they live close to each other. So um, it was bound to happen at some point. At the time, she, when she first fought Amanda, Amanda wasn't uh, the champion she is today. She was a up-and-coming fighter. Um, so they, they were great fights. At the time, they fought in a weight class. I I don't know if it's the same thing in English, absolute weight class, where people of different weights fight uh, together. Um, and she said it's really nice seeing where Amanda has come right now in her career, uh, being that they're from similar realities, similar backgrounds. She said that it's an inspiration seeing where Amanda has come and where she also has come in her career right now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just looking at how, looking at how it's all played out is a, a very cool thing. So just had to bring that up, of course. But um, yeah, I will leave you with one last thing, Verena, of course. Um, you know, your nickname, Kakara, I think that's a fantastic nickname. You know, we've talked about the, uh, the origin story a little bit behind it and everything. So I'm curious, you know, I know that there's a song about the, about the bird and everything. 
have you used it as your walkout yet? I mean, I haven't, unless I haven't been paying attention, you already have, but have you considered using this, the, the song for your walkouts? <laughs> Sim, sim, eu entro com a música, né, que é Carcará. Yeah, she said that she, she walks out to the song uh, Carcará, but a version of a regional singer in, of Bahia, where she lives. Um, and she says that Carcará is a bird of the Northeast. It's a very strong, powerful bird. Uh, the song ended up fitting as a glove for her because it showed her strength and her, her power. And uh, it's the perfect representation of where she comes from, from the northeast of Brazil, because it shows the resilience and the power of the people from there. Yes, very fitting indeed. But that's also funny because, like, listening to the song and looking at the lyrics and everything, the singer she mentions how it's like a mean bird and everything. And I think that's funny because you're so nice. Do, do people ever be like, Kakara, I mean, well, you're so nice, Verna. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she says that um, the it's really cool to have the union of these two extremes, right? To be really sweet and also be very aggressive. She she brings out the carcara when she needs it, when she needs to most. When she goes for the fights, the bird comes out. Definitely, very well said. It's a yeah, that's what MMA does to people, right? It just uh, <laughs> brings out the the fierceness. So. Uh, Perfectly said. Well said. Fantastic nickname. Um, and a fantastic fighter, Verna. You're one of my favorite to watch right now. So thanks so much for catching up here. That is all I got for you. I cannot wait to see this fight unfold, to see you continue, you know, to do your thing. Uh, your jiu-jitsu is just like, I, can't, I love watching. Love watching. I love watching you fight. So very excited for this one. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, I wish you the best of luck and safe travels to getting to the States and everything, as I'm sure you'll be leaving here soon, whenever that is. Um, and yeah, I'm sure we'll we'll talk soon. Good luck. Thank you so much. Obrigado. <laughs> Obrigado. <laughs> Maravilha. Muito obrigada. Eu que agradeço. Agradeço. It was a pleasure talking to you and um, for, to thank you for giving her a platform. And she's excited to to go to the states. Thank you. See you, my friends. Oh hey, you made it to the end. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you like this video and want to see more like it, give it a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Until then, we'll see you next time.